All right, let's look at this 4.5 study. This is the last section before we go into the unit four test. So um, in your own words, there's two new vocab words here. So the first vocab word we're looking at is this zero of a function. So the zero of a function is the x coordinate of an x intercept. So if an x-intercept of our function, for example, was negative 2, 0, the 0 of the function would be the x-coordinate or the negative 2. So the x-coordinate of an x-intercept. So if this is my whole x-intercept, the 0 is just this piece. Um, this is the value. Where a function is equal to 0. where f of x equals 0. And zeros and roots have the same values. So in next chapter, we're going to be talking about zeros, roots, x-intercepts, solutions, all these different vocab words that are kind of talking about the same thing. And we're going to start to distinguish between those different vocabularies. Um, root is a solution to an equation. Um, it is the roots of a quadratic in this form are the same as the zeros of the related function. So the roots of a quadratic of this form we're getting used to this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, um, equal to zero, are the same as the zeros. So a, a root is a solution to an equation. The roots of a quadratic of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, are the same as the zeros of the related function in the form of the function f of x equals ax squared plus bx. So these, this words, zero and roots, zeros and roots, zeros and roots, we're going to really have to start to distinguish what these words mean by the time we get to the next chapter. We're just starting it here. All right, let's take a peek here at this bottom section, this little kind of table-y uh, thing here, this flow chart. Fill in the blanks using the usual cues. How a graph helps you solve a polynomial equation. Identify the x-intercepts of the graph, the points where the graph meet the x-axis. So we're gonna look at the graph and find those x-intercepts. The x-intercepts, tell you the zeros of the function and the roots of the related equation. It tells you the zeros of the function and the roots of the related equation. The roots tell you the polynomial's factors. Okay, and we're gonna go take a peek at the next page. If b is a root of a polynomial equation, then x minus b is the factor of the polynomial. Notice that it is opposite signs. Okay, so, oops, can't see that part. So the root and the factor have opposite signs. All right, so an example is that x squared plus x minus six has a root of two, and so if we did the x on this, negative six and one, which is three times two, which one's gonna get the negative? We'll notice that it has a root of positive two and a factor of x minus two. A factor is negative and the root is positive. It's telling us that when the factor is one sign, then the root is the opposite sign. If negative b 
is a root of a polynomial, then x plus b is the factor of the polynomial. So again, x squared plus b minus 6, the same one we just factored, we see that positive 3 is also a factor, and the root would be negative 3. So positive 3 is a factor, the root would be the opposite sign. Now let's use a graph to answer our questions here on this next section. Notice in the picture, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, that 2 and 4 are the x-intercepts of this graph. So what are the two zeros of this polynomial function? It's just positive 2 and positive 4 right there in the picture. What are the two factors of the polynomial? If the roots are 2 and 4, then the factors are negative 2 and negative 4. Notice the opposite signs. Roots and factors have opposite signs. All right, uh, looking down here, it says to use the graphs to fill in the blanks for the next ones on the next page. All right, so looking at this picture up here, we've now got a full quadratic expression given to us in each of these and the graph that matches it. So it's asking us, what is the zero of this graph? What is the one place it touches on the x-intercept? Here's the zero. And then the repeated factor, if it only touches once in the picture, it means it's a perfect square trinomial. And so what the heck do you mean, Ms. Sanchez? Let's try this out. 4 would be in the top, negative 4 in the bottom. What times what makes 4? What signs should it have? My repeated factor is an x minus 2 squared. Notice that if the 0 or the root is positive 2, then the factor is negative 2. If my 0 is a negative 3, then my factor is a positive 3. And again, if I wanted to do the factoring on this, what times 1 is 9 and equals 6? There's my 3 and 3. There's my perfect square trinomial. We just did those. All right, steps for finding the zeros of a function. Okay, set the function equal to zero first. And so here we go, setting it equal to zero. And then factor the polynomial if it's not already factored. So here, x squared minus 2x minus 8 would be 2 times 4, and the 4 gets the negative. So x plus 2, x minus 4. We already know these steps. We just got this far in the last couple sections. Now, set each factor equal, equal to 0. And so we're going to say x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0, and then solve for x. So x is going to equal, if I subtract 2 from both sides, x equals negative 2. If I add 4 to both sides, x equals positive 4. This is how to get the zeros of the function. x equals negative 2 and 4. This is where, on a graph, this parabola would touch the x-axis. And that's the end of our study guide. Nice short.